Hello and welcome to a scrumdly umptious Chilga Humping Hopscotchy 6th or is it 7th edition of Newington AAA Radio Show. It's a show that puts the gobble funk into the froth buggling. It's the poppy rot to get your snores come by fizz wiggling. It's the show more whiz popping and from scuttle than is usually deemed necessary. It's the hold your horses, your reckless highwaymen and ladies of the air and video waves. Why are you talking in such a bizarre manner? That my biff squiggled young colleague is because our programme is a celebration of all things roll doll. The legendary author invented so many of his own nonsense words that he has his own special dictionary. Ah, so does that mean we can quite literally pack our programme with a whole load of words that make no sense whatsoever? Of course. Business as usual then. Tell you that jingle on Mum V2. Our brand new radio special. It's radio, it's video, it's radio. Celebrates the life and times of World Dial. It features a pinch of literary magic and a bookcase full of wisdom, fun facts, and a feature celebrating the author's life and times. But who was World Dial? What was he all about, eh? And how did he become one of the world's most famous authors that did ever live? Ever. Well, the answer to my inquisitive questionnaire begins in the place of Royal Dolls' birth in Sumter's Valleys of Wales, a land of legends that can only be reached through Celtic magic or by using the Seventh Bridge. In fact, that reminds me of a very old joke. How do you get two wells in a mini? I don't know. Down the M4 and over the Seventh Bridge. <laughs> Anyhow, it was in Wales that Roald was born to two Norwegian parents and he grew up to be a right trickster. A well-documented story is when he and his friends placed a dead mouse in a sweet jar in a sweet shop owned by a not very sweet lady. The grumpy shop owner was described by Roald as a small skinny old hag with a moustache and upper lip, little piggy eye and a mouth sour of green goose sprays. Roald later used me chop cream keeper as an inspiration for some of his awful adult characters including the twits. Rob left school when he was 16 to work for Shell Oil in Africa. Rob longed to see the world and go on adventures. He was a fighter pilot in World War II but was involved in a plane crash and was badly injured. After the crash, Roald Dahl was unable to fly again and was posted by MI6, possibly by Airmail, to the US Embassy to work as a spy, alongside Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond. England. It was during Will's time in America that he began writing stories about his war experiences that were well received and published in magazines. Roald Dahl said in a voice that sounded a bit like Olivia's. As I went on, my stories became less and less realistic and more fantastic. But becoming a writer was pure fluke. Without being asked to, I doubt if I ever have thought of it. Roald Dahl wrote his first children's book in 1943 called The Gremlins. This book was about a type of creature that lived on fighter planes and were responsible for every crash. The book helped establish the word gremlin that has been enjoyed in popular culture ever since. In 1953, Roald married a Hollywood actress and later Oscar winner Patricia Neal. They had five children and it was Roald's bedtime stories that he would make up to entertain his children that would become the inspiration for books that made him so famous. In a voice sounding just like a list, Roald added, Children are highly critical and they lose interest so quickly. You have to keep things tickling along. And if you think a child is getting bored, you must think up something that jolts it back, something that tickles. You have to know what children like. 
Wild Dog continued to achieve success by writing books for adults, but found huge success with James and Giant Peach and Charlie and Chocolate Factory in the early 1960s. Wild Dog went on to write a further 15 children's books, many of which would become successful films. These included Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Witches, Matilda and the BFG. In total, Roald Dahl had 48 books printed and many of these books remain as popular now as they ever were. Roald Dahl died of a rare blood disorder on November 23rd, 1990. His family buried him with his much-loved snooker cubes, HP pencils, burgundy wine, chocolates and a power saw. He had sold over 250 million books and inspired the generations of children's authors that followed him. Term 5, the whole of our school celebrated the life and work of Roald Dahl. Each year group read one of his texts and at the end of the term we performed a musical extravaganza in the author's honour. The finale to the show was our performance of When I Grow Up from Matilda the Musical. Here is a senior choir singing the song and you can croon along at home.
shows many things to many people. Many people know many things about Roald Dahl, but not many people know the sort of things about Roald Dahl that we know and are about to share in a feature called Things You Never Knew About Roald Dahl. Waldo, author of the BFG, was himself a bit of a giant. He towered over everybody and was six foot tall and six inches high. Fact number two! Roald Dahl was a chocolate taster for Cadbury's while at boarding school. Every year, Roald Dahl and his friends would be sent Cadbury's newest inventions, sweet. These sugar-filled experiences would later inspire Roald Dahl to write Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. They might also account for the fact that he had all his teeth replaced by false ones at the age of 21. Fact number three! As well as writing books, Roald Dahl also wrote screenplays. These include the James Bond film You Only Live Twice and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. He also wrote the screenplay for Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but never liked the film. Roald didn't like Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka and hated the changes made in his original script. The $300,000 that he would earn for writing the script might have helped him a bit, though. Fact number four! Roald Dahl wrote many of his stories in a shed in his back garden. The shed was known as a writing hut. Dahl sat on an old comfy armchair with a hole in the back to help his back pain. Roll wrote his books with a yellow pencil and yellow paper and his favourite Coldplay song was Fix You. I will try to fix you. Fact number five. Roll Doll invented a medical valve that helped drain dangerous fluid from the brain. Roald's four-month-old son, Theo, was hit by a taxi and suffered damage to his brain. This inspired Roald and a toy maker friend to design a valve that drained water from the brain quicker. Theo made a full recovery. I will try to fix you. Community Primary School, we try to encourage pupils to read every day at least for 10 minutes. This helps children improve their concentration, helps to develop vocabulary and language skills, and helps children to become more imaginative. Reading is also a lot of fun and has been proved to reduce stress. The school choir recorded our school's very own reading song, and the video has gone on to attract over 20,000 views on YouTube. Hooray! Why not follow our lead and take some time to read? When I read
CPS love the musical Matilda. It is full of catchy songs that really help to bring the story alive. Our school took every pupil from year one right up to year six to watch the production in London. But one question echoed around the theatre like an elephant in a cave. Who wrote the music and lyrics to this hit western show and how did the transformation from a book to a musical show come about? Well we at Newington Triple A Radio did a bit of investigating and can confirm that the man that put a treble clef into a trench ball was none other than Australian comedian, musician and all around clever clogs, Tim Minchin, real name Timothy. We tried as hard as granite to find out some facts about Tim, which we've compiled in a section called Three Facts About Tim Minchin. Three facts about Tim Minchin that we would like to mention. Three facts about Tim Minchin that we would like to say. Fact number one, Tim Minchin is Australian. Fact number two, Tim Minchin was originally born in Britain. Fact number three, Matilda the Musical has scooped over 85 theatre awards. Hmm, not very exciting, is it? We then thought it would be more fun to make up some facts about him that bear no resemblance to fact whatsoever. Made up facts about your mention that we would like to mention. Facts about your mention that I'm a fact at all. Tim Mitchum was named after the famous H.G. Wells novel, The Time Machine. His brother, War of the Worlds, was also named after this author's celebrated book. But sadly, little was seen of his third brother. Make up non-fact number two. Tim Minchin is sometimes confused with David Bowie's much criticised and short-lived band, Tim Machine. This is also factually incorrect, as Tim Minchin is much admired for his excellent lyrics and music, whereas Tim Machine definitely were not. Made up non-fact number three. Tim's surname, Minchin, was not named after the small people that Dorothy meets before travelling on the yellow brick road in The Wizard of Oz. However, the Google search engine could not tell the difference between the words Tim Minchin and Tim Munchkin, which caused much hilarity in the video studio. In fact, we were moved to say, ha ha ha, we were moved to say, he he he, and gave a couple of tra-la-las. That's how Tim spends the day away in the merry old land of Oz. Made up facts about Tim Minchin that we would like to mention. And that rather strange feature brings us to the very final radio show of this academic year. This show is also special because it's the very last episode that will feature the many talents of the man some people know as Mr Cox. Captain Cox, as he became known in Radio Land, was well known for having curly locks and dandy socks. But more than that, he helped turn Radio into a double award winning visual success that it became, or is becoming, or has become. We hereby induct Mr Cox into the Radio Hall of Fame and wish him every good luck for the future. We leave you with a brief visual celebration of his much admired foot attire and his mop of non-straight hair follicles. It's radio, it's video, it's radio. And it's official launch. It's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Greenwich Mean Time. Blue, blue, electric blue. That's the colour of my room where I will live. Sit right down Waiting for the gift of sound and vision And I will see Waiting for the gift of sound and vision Drifting into my solitude Over my head Don't you wonder sometimes About sound and vision